Before we do that, I'm going to present a PowerPoint presentation on the budget. I think in order for me to have a microphone, I might be able to slide my um, laptop down here. No, not the microphone. We probably might be able to do it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I think it'll be okay. Let me see if I can just move this down so I can. How far does that microphone go? Turn off at least maybe one light. It's one switch. It's one switch does it all. Yeah. Okay, we promised not to sleep. I'll bring candles next time. <laughs> Flashlight. Okay. The whole light. So let's, let's see if we have we can get to this. And if you have any questions, you know, hold them for the hearing, and then I'll we'll obviously go back and answer them later. Um. All right. So here we go. Some of you heard last week that this changed a bit. Okay. Um. The agenda. I pulled out a little bit. I kept in there the, the main points I think the citizens and the council are most interested in. Mayor's message, general funds, special revenue funds, capital improvement funds, water, sewer, garbage, stormwater, and equipment funds. Okay, and the mayor's message, the primary parts of it that you might find interesting are the um, what the city does, protects people's homes, businesses, manages impact of growth, you know, builds capital facilities, maintains and manages streets, provides park and recreation activities, manages water, <coughs> sewer, stormwater, and protects the environment. In 2014, some of the highlights so far in the budget are the coal increase for union employees, 1%. Um, and you can see what else is up there. I don't really need to read everything for everybody, just some of the high points to look at. Um, staffing additions, we're looking at hiring public works director. And the, the goal, it's the goal of staff and council to balance the general fund revenues for this expenditure. Okay, next. Okay, and there's general fund revenue. 39% is taxes, and it's property taxes, sales taxes are the majority. And we have license and permits in our governmental revenue charges for goods and services, total fines and penalties, and miscellaneous and non-revenues. The General Fund Department, City Council. Maybe recognize those people up there? <laughs> Try to make it more personalized this time. <laughs> okay, so um, we all know the City Council passes motions, ordinances, and resolutions. <coughs> Appropriate funds for various city activities, awards major contracts, make appointments to boards and commissions, represent the city before other governmental units and the public, and oversees the administration of to assure compliance with council policy. And you can see some of the goals completed in 13. They're not comprehensive, obviously. In 2014, some of the goals that they're working with. 
Okay, um, so it's for the municipal court, uh, what they do, process traffic infractions, criminal misdemeanors, and gross misdemeanors. Um, so the interesting to me, because I didn't really know everything that they, that they were doing, taking place with the within city limits, um, process violations in specific municipal codes. And they're they're really <laughs> I gotta say this Kelly, but they're really busy as bees in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um that was a Halloween custom. Um, anyway, <laughs> we do these functions for outgoing as well. Let's get that off before she gets me. <laughs> city clerk, uh so our city clerk not only does minutes for the meeting, does their clerk responsibilities, but also <coughs> is the records manager, the personnel manager. And, okay, and her narrative, which is kind of hard to read, I know that is, but you, it's going to be in the budget, you guys, and if you want copies of it, we're going to make copies available by the June 19th, but you can certainly come down and get some anytime you want. Um, there's her goals for training, certification, and uh, okay. finance department, something that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're trying to make everything so you can understand it, but then for the PowerPoint presentation, you can't read the stuff, but that's okay. So you and there's copies in the hallway if you need to look at it. Um, so we've added the budget narrative this year so that you can actually not have to read the numbers and understand what the budget's doing. And there's the police department. And I actually, due to some questions from council members, I broke down, I'll show you this, broke down the expenditures that the police um, total into their parts, and so what we have here, operational is 52%, that's basically uh, feed the street as we like to call it, and you know, fuel to their vehicles, things like that, repairs, and then um, the criminal justice fund, which is where some of the capital um, leasing expenses are, and the uh, communication expenses are, is there, and then GNA is for um, general administrative, which is like the clerk and the chief, and o other overhead. Community development. Um, so we have the issue permits, questions regarding codes, permissible land uses. So hopefully by reading through this you can get a better understanding if you didn't before you looked at a budget. Because I know the numbers can be a little bit overwhelming. Senior center. There's a narrative too, and it tells you who they are and what and what the purpose is to provide a safe and welcoming place for elderly members of the community to enjoy social interaction, ongoing activities, and transportation access. Not a lot of cities this size have a senior center, so I think it's a great service that the city provides. And uh, at the end, um, the RC put a really good statement. With the senior center being uh, open, provides a place for elderly citizens to go and keep them off the streets. So we, re we all remember the Great Panthers. <laughs> we don't want to see their come back, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, um, youth and family services. So not to make Kelly feel like she was targeted, we have Joanne <laughs> in her raggedy Ann outfit. Um, she's great with the kids and provides quite a few services for them. Uh, and then we have parks and the inventory. All the parks we have about 12 parks. It looks like quite a few. 19 acres. 19 acres of park. Yep. Uh, that's amazing for such a small town. That's really cool. Um, and I know I'll be talking to one of the citizens on this pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, look forward to it. Criminal here's the criminal justice fund. Um, this is the expenditures I pulled out so you can look at it. Small tools and equipment, new equipment supplies, prisoner medical expense, prisoner lodging. So some significant expenses are, are lodged there and do make up a portion of those the overall police budget. But yeah, don't even try to read that. <laughs> it's just, I, I put the schedule in and, and actually you can look at it. Uh, it's really small even in the packet, so if you want to copy that, it's not finalized by any means. It shows the computers, their age, when I project we're going to replace them, and the cost for the year we replace them in. We have three years, 13, 14, and 15 to replace the older ones, which are Window XD, which is basically five years or older. And I'll put up. When I do pass this out to the council and to citizens, it'll be it'll show our plan to replace our equipment <coughs> and the policy that will drive that. <coughs> we have the special revenue funds, which is streets and <coughs> tourism. Um, got the uh, basically the roads and the miles. How many miles?
now that for a little bit. It's about 20, oh, we've got 49 lane miles of road that we have to operate and maintain. That's just the paved roads, and then there's another mile at least of gravel roads that we maintain. I'm or Mr. Mark over here maintains, or helps us maintain. <laughs> so um, we have 99, 99 sign controlled intersections. Uh, yes. Okay, so um, capital improvement funds. These are, there's the list of the projects, basically. Muni capital improvement doesn't have any right now. Um, but council wants us to discuss in the coming meetings. And then you see the other projects that are going to be going in 2014. Water fund. Okay, let's look at that. Um, it shows the inventory and the existing distribution system inventory. <coughs> we have the same with the sewer fund. Sewer system. There's a lot of par parts that go into a city, a lot of pieces that make it up, as you can see with and there it is. Stormwater, drainage, conveyance facilities, collection and treatment facilities. So we have a hundred five thousand seven hundred and four feet of pipe. Twenty miles. <laughs> wow. Amazing. A lot of maintenance fund. Okay. Now the utilities equipment fund is a replacement fund for um, well actually everything related to utilities such as backhoes and mowers and things like that. What the plan is, and I read the uh, the, the city's policy, thanks to Jim Morgan who <coughs> sent it to me last week, is that this fund will receive a transfer from other utility funds such as water and sewer and stormwater. And <coughs> meanwhile, accruing monies to replace something if, some, if there's something that would go wrong earlier than planned. But the basic plan is to have in each fund the, the amount to replace the, the vehicle or whatever it is throughout its natural use. So we have one fund which has transfers in it to keep everything viable in case there's an accident, something breaks down, you can replace it then. But in the other fund, the main fund, you accrue a certain amount. So, so, and you have, you have to keep enough in there so you can buy, purchase after a number of years the wear and tear. And I'll pass that out at our um, next workshop so you understand. Uh, okay, the additional reports, we have quite a few pie charts. Citywide revenue projections, citywide allocations, the general fund 49% of that. Let's go back and look at um, revenue. The biggest revenue is the general fund, 43%. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, general fund revenue, 39% is tax revenue. General fund expenditures, 59% is law enforcement, but we tell you that breakdown. And then we have citywide payroll and the FTE schedule, which is still being finalized. And finally, the public works summary narrative. So if anybody wants a copy of these, they're out in the hallway, and if you want the budget we have it right now, be free to come down to City Hall and, um, and get it. And next week we'll be turning out one of the final, hopefully the final, if not final, close to final iteration of the budget. So I hope that's helped a little bit. That's it.
uh, set up the parks for events and clean up after events. Well, we really didn't set up much as a parks department. And well, if we're having to clean up the park after the event, well, then we need to be assessing somebody some money for cleanup. But our major planned activities are apply for and receive grants for park improvements and purchase and develop the Hatch and Morgan properties. So I believe the Hatch property, we already have the money, we're just waiting for a few things. So if that's our goal for 14, that's like an already done deal. And the Morgan property, well, as a citizen, I can tell you there's a slim chance, very slim, that we will find $400,000, which is about how much we need to find, out of our budget. Because most of the grants out there are matching grants. So I would just like to see the parks mm, rewritten, and I'd be more than happy to assist you with that, um, on activities that we could do to promote growth in our parks and what we could do. So things that, ooh, I would like to suggest that the Parks uh, Council, um, not the Council, the um, Park Board, <coughs> you allow us to assist you with ideas for what our goals should really be for 14, and that's my fault because I didn't already submit them to you. I understand that. So if you're going to approve it in next, when, next Monday, you're going to have a final? No, well, next Monday we're going to have a budget workshop. The final won't be until December, but we're getting closer to having it. So on the 23rd, when we have our love fest for the park board, we would like to provide you with some input if you would accept that. Would that be acceptable to the council? Yes, you can expect it um, the finance committee who will talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Richard. Did you say that was 9 to 1 on the 23rd? You bet. Okay. And you're welcome to come. I may. Thank At you At least so for much. a portion of it. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh, I'm sure you will. As I drive by and go, hi. Yeah. Thank you. I'll take it. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to be talking to you about it. Stacey Kennedy, 2nd Avenue, Southeast. I just have a couple questions. The judge's um, salary and like public defender, where is that in here? In the budget, or what part of the budget does that affect? It goes under the criminal justice in the police department. It's not an individual salary or no. public defender. Okay, my next question. You will see that. The, the oh. breakdown will be coming out. This is right now, just kind of give you a preliminary where the budget is. Okay, my next question is the pet licensing. Where is the income for that? For the pet Metro. licensing? Because yeah. I know there was like animal control, but I didn't see anything for pet licensing. And the licensing that you had listed was only for businesses. The income that's generated from that. Okay, what well I suggest is come down. If you have some chance to come down, we can go over that together. It's not, is it in here? It's not in there directly, no. It's in, in the budget. Is that like the other? It's in the budget. President has one. And it's in the police. It's in the police portion of the budget. Pet life? Right, it is. It is. It's under, it's, yeah. Okay, that's all I was curious. Pet life. Okay. Any comments or questions on this public hearing for the preliminary budget? I had to do a little camera adjusting here. Jean Fancher, 372 Fifty Fifth Avenue South. Um, I get the senior discount now. You can tell by my wonderful gray hair. Almost, almost 65. Um, but I have a neighbor. I live in a neighborhood that has aging people. I there are people in my neighborhood who have been there since the. Uh, 50s, and some homes have actually been abandoned because of the health issues of the, uh, the, the property owners. They've moved into shag housing. Um, there are pretty much people who, who are self-sufficient and get Social Security, but 
they do have food and transportation issues. And while I find it, you know, it's really good that the senior center budget is geared towards providing a safe place for people to come, um, I don't see an emphasis as policy of the, the city stated policy, maybe it's in the comp plan, and I haven't read it for a while, that we're going to try and reach out to seniors and youth who have challenges uh, whether it's um, food, shelter, transportation, um, you know, people go, can come down to the food bank and get food if they can get here, if they have no car, if they have children who are ignoring them, if they're afraid to call the neighbors for fear of being rejected. I mean, there are, there needs to be some outreach and probably the, the biggest, um, the biggest issue is the connectivity of the community. Uh, Algona has a, I think it's a community affairs or development director. I mean, there's a person over there who arranges community events, helps put out the newsletter, works on communications. Um, maybe the best example of a lack of connectivity is, uh, well, like in the, the, in the Philippines right now with the typhoon, People are driving from Manila or taking ferries to get to the islands that are affected with food and water to help their families, and they're being robbed along the way. But there's a, an infrastructure. There are organizations coming to help. We, on the other hand, have a very rich community, but we can't, we're having trouble getting people together to put together their three days and three ways kits. We're, I guess there's an outreach program to find people who will need help in an emergency. Um, you know, without a fine reading in the budget, you can't find that. But I guess what I'd like to see in the budget, in the narrative, is an articulation of <laughs> how the city <coughs> policy does look out for each other in terms of in times of an emergency and provide some funding for that outreach, not just making the, the senior center or the gym available for people to come to it, but some funding for outreach into the community because there is a need out there. There are lots of hungry people. There are people who are homebound. There are folks who can't get things done. That's one of the things we learned on Make a Difference Day. A uh, woman in her 90s had a backyard that needed to be cut and she had two adult children, well, one adult child and one adult grandchild in her household that just weren't up to doing that. And they said, hey, mom, look at this program. You know, found us at the city hall. Um, for whatever reason, people are not being taken care of. And maybe that's not the job of the city, but I would like to see that there's something in there to encourage that connectivity. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Are there any other comments in the public hearing for the 